Begin is the stage. Begin is the stage. Do I watch or listen back to my work? Huh. So this is something I'm getting better at. When I started out, I found it really hard to listen to myself at all. To have that thing where I'd be like, "Is that really how I sound?" And I am getting over it. I find these days that if I can just listen to it the first time, then from then on, if I listen to it again, I'll be less critical. From then on, it's as if it kind of gives me some distance, and instead of thinking, "Oh, I should have done this, I should have done that," I'm able to think, "This is just something that's done," and think less about it being me. I do try now, and listen to my audio work because I'm lucky to work with some really tremendous teams who have done a beautiful job of making the end product, and I wouldn't want my own. Personal fear and terror to stop me listening to the end product because I think that would be very unjust towards them. I'm certainly going to listen to this. Do you like to watch or listen back to your work? No, no. I was in a few kind of quite gritty plays in the 70s and 80s, and uh, I, <laughs> I'm I'm not really a very gritty actor, and I used to hide behind the sofa and let. My girlfriend watch it and tell me if I was any good. That I can't, I can't stand watching myself, and listening to myself. Yeah, I can just about get away with, but I don't, I don't really enjoy it. No. Did I watch or listen back to my work? Absolutely not. <laughs> I、um, occasionally would just play the first ten seconds of a file just to make sure I had actually recorded it and that it was all there, safe and sound. But I would never listen back to it. One because the files were very long, and also because we recorded this remotely and in isolation, the other actors wouldn't have been on our sound files, so it would just be me <laughs> talking to myself. However, when it's all edited and online, I, I will actually listen to it all. It would be fascinating to know what takes they chose, and also just to learn. I feel like every job I do, I learn something new, and it informs the work I do next. So. Do I like to watch or listen back to my work? Yes and no. So I, I also make music as well. And when it comes to my songs, because I'm doing the engineering myself, like I'm doing the picking the best takes and picking the you know, oh I sounded weird here and whatever, and all the equalising and everything, compressing and whatever. That、I've, oh my gosh, having to listen to my voice over and over again is is just a lot. <laughs> it's just a lot. So no. But when it comes to watching things I've been in, sometimes that's nice because the other actors that I've been, you know, acting with in that in that thing, are in that as well, and it's nice to. It kind of takes me back that moment. I've been quite lucky actually to have a bunch of really good experiences in the acting industry thus far. So it's nice to watch those moments back and be like, oh my gosh, I remember doing this scene. That was really nice. Yeah. Do you like to watch or listen back to your work? No, I hate listening to myself and I hate watching myself. I think a lot of actors will say the same thing. I mean, it's terrible, and I should like to listen to myself and watch myself, but I can't. I just do the job and I move on. I both like and hate watching or listening back to my own work at the same time. I, I like looking back at work I've done because you know if. If people like it, then you know it gives me a bit of joy to go back and try and see or hear what they're seeing or, or hearing. However, sometimes <laughs> I really, really don't like it because obviously you're going to be your biggest critic. So、uh, I'll also be, you know, watching or listening and thinking、uh, that could have I could have done that better. No, I'm not sure I pronounced that right.、Well, marks down, Harry. I think very few actors actively enjoy watching or listening back to their work. However, I have become quite used to it because I've recorded so many audio books, and I've recorded a number of those, the majority of those, in fact, in my home studio and without an external producer or director working with me on that. And so, it's been necessary for me to listen back to my own work as part of the process before sending files over to an editor who cleans everything up and then. 
puts that out on Audible or via whatever platforms. I have therefore become inured in the last few years to the sound of my own voice. And it was a horrible shock the first few times, but I now am quite used to it. So it's not so bad for me as I think it is for some other people to hear themselves back. I do actually get something out of watching myself back as well, because I think I have, as most actors do, uh, a fairly low opinion of myself. And I actually usually find I'm reasonably pleasantly surprised. I see myself back in something that I've done on screen and I think, oh, OK, no, actually, I'm, I'm sort of reasonably convincing for a, a percentage of that. <laughs> and that's a win as far as I'm concerned. What were the first and last scenes I recorded? Well, the first scene I recorded was, I think it was episode two, scene four. It's uh, just after Gaius and Mark have been victorious against Brutus at war. They've returned to Rome and they're addressing the Senate. And Mark just really doesn't want to be there. He's a bit hungover and he'd just rather be in bed. The last thing I remember recording wasn't a scene. It was actually just some pickups. Yeah, I needed to do some grunts after meeting or realizing that I'm about to meet Cleopatra in the most undignified way. And yeah, so I'm just grunting and moaning about it. So that was the last thing I recorded. What were the first and last scenes I recorded? Ooh. I can't tell you exactly, but what I can tell you is that we didn't record anything in order. It was quite funny sometimes, you know, recording, I think a scene that I found particularly emotional like a bit of a tearjerker. I found that quite an emotional section to do, and that felt like it should be one of the very last ever recording sessions. But when we were recording it, I knew I had a few more to go because <laughs> we were going backwards. But it's great. I suppose having that just informs some of the choices that you make about things that happen earlier on, even though you record them later, you know. It's all part of the process, yeah. The first scene we recorded, I... I could be wrong, but I think it was the first meeting of the triumvirate between Gaius, Lepidus, and an incredibly drunk Mark, Antony. The last scene I did was the second-to-last episode, where, unlike the first scene, with a very enthusiastic Gaius, it's a very depressed, downtrodden end of his tether Gaius making a desperate plea with Cleopatra, which, uh, which was fun. I don't actually remember what the first scene was that I recorded for Cry Havoc because we've recorded it over a many months and it seems like a very long time ago now. But the last or one of the last scenes I recorded was a very big emotional tragic scene. And that was really, yeah, it was a challenge to, to do that scene, particularly because it came off the back of another scene that we had just come straight out of that was a big comic, quite broad, <laughs> panto-style scene. So it was a real change of emotion between the two. But it was actually really lovely because we'd been recording for so many months. It was lovely right at the end to do this big sort of final scene. <laughs> And I felt quite genuinely emotional about it because we'd all been working together for so long and we were finally saying goodbye. So that was lovely. It was serendipitous that we ended with that one. Well, I was very lucky because a lot of the recording did have to go out of order, but I got to do my first scene first and my last scene last. So Fulvia's first and last scenes, I actually did first and last, which was incredible. So my very first scene is from episode one, you'll hear it in the very first episode, scene three. It's the first time you meet Fulvia, and she is with Mark, and it's this crowd scene where we get to see how they are publicly compared to how they are privately. They're trying to balance both these things in front of a crowd, and in a very short amount of time, we learn quite a lot about their relationship and their dynamics. It's it's a huge amount crammed into the writing about what they're like as a couple. And I think, I think it was the scene I auditioned with. So I've kind of been aware of this scene for a long time. But it was absolutely wonderful to be able to do the scene with Kazim. Kazim, who plays Mark Antony, has been brilliant. A lot of what Fulvia does is with him. And it's just been so much fun to explore their dynamic together. And also it was great for me that I was able to do their last scene as my last scene. And yeah, 
It was lovely to be able to do that in order. It gives you a real sense of journey. And in a way, the fact that it has taken quite a long time to record um, helped to make it feel quite epic. What were the first and last scenes you recorded? I can't remember. Um, next question. Did I have any particularly challenging scenes to record? Um, yes. So the scene with me and the Dread Pirate Sextus. So there's a lot of fighting in that scene and a lot of grunting in between, you know, having to like deliver these really quick, witty lines. As characters, we're locked in battle, quotation marks, and then we're also playing out to some characters who are standing over on the shore. We're on like a pirate ship and we're having like a fake fight and we're having a conversation while we're fighting, but we're also trying to make it look very believable to the people over on land. And doing that whilst also having to get these grunts in at the right time and trying to time them, that was, it was a madness. I think there was quite a few takes that, that day, but um, I think we got there in the end. I hope we got there in the end. No one's called me to come back and re-record any lines yet, so yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we got there. Did you have any particularly challenging scenes to record? Not challenging, no. I think working with this cast on Rome Cry Havoc has been amazing. All the actors have been so generous and so playful and, you know, so supportive of each other. Um, so it's actually been a real joy to record. And it's been almost a year, so we've had a great time. We've had a lot of laughs, a lot of technical issues, but it's been a lot of fun. Did I have any particularly challenging scenes to record? There were a few. But the main reason why they were difficult was because it's so funny. <laughs> I was like finding myself having to mute myself a lot of the time when I wasn't involved in scenes. But I'd be waiting to speak because I couldn't stop laughing. And I found one scene that particularly challenging was the episode where Cleopatra arrives. It's a ridiculously funny episode for me. And it was challenging to not corpse, which is a term we use in acting during the scene, which is to just laugh. So uh, staying in character, staying focused, even though I was finding the script really funny, was probably one of the most challenging things, and particularly in that episode where Cleopatra arrives. Yeah, there were some challenging scenes to record. There'd be sometimes in scenes where my character would be running in, but of course I'm in this tiny, tiny space, so it was quite challenging to try and run in <laughs> to try and manipulate my voice to make it sound like I was running into a space or moving away from the mic and moving towards it but not overdoing it you know yeah or like bellowing across a hall you know or bellowing out on stage that was quite challenging yeah and to really sort of try and picture where I was did I have any particularly challenging scenes to record uh, I mean there was one where uh, Lepidus I wouldn't give any of it away, but Lepidus has a bit of a disaster and it all goes horribly wrong and he's very upset about it. I suppose that was the, the most challenging scene I had to do. But apart from that, the rest of it was, was, was a breeze. Don't tell anybody. They think it's very difficult. Did you have any particularly challenging scenes to record? When you are remote recording, sometimes getting the levels right on the louder scenes can be tricky just because you are in a very small space sometimes trying to sell being loud in a very loud space and there is a particular scene where fulvia incites a mob to murder which was a little bit challenging to get the levels right so that was challenging in a technical way i always enjoyed a scene in episode 19 where fulvia confronts the triumvirate about I really can't talk about this because it is spoilers. I really think there is no scenario in which I can talk about this scene. It's in episode 19, and I think it's a brilliant scene. I think so many scenes in this series are brilliant. Sometimes intimidatingly so. I don't know if anyone else ever finds this, but sometimes as an actor you find that a line is so perfect or a scene is it leaps off the page so much that you almost feel you can't... You can't nail it enough. But really, this, this scene was just enormous fun to do. It was enormous fun to do opposite three brilliant actors and enormous fun for Fulvia to find a way of taking control even of a situation like that. I don't 
really think I can say more than that, but um, it was great to do it. I'm not sure how much into spoilers I can go. The scene I found most challenging, or, or at least the one that comes to mind immediately, is episode 15, I think? It, it's the bit at the uh, sexy party when Gaius completely loses his rag and goes into a massive rant at all the partygoers. You know, it felt like a big scene to me because you had nearly all the actors there and it, it was a vicious side to Gaius that bubbles out and you haven't really seen this aspect to him before. I, I didn't want it to be, you know, just angry and shouty, which I was a, I was afraid it would it would turn into. But yeah, I don't know. For some reason, that scene, that bit, that just made me the most nervous. Uh, um, well, there are a bunch of other moments that made me nervous, but that's the main one, I think. I don't have any standout moments or anything sort of really notably hilarious, but I did laugh a lot on this job, you know, and for all the right reasons. The cast are very funny really really funny so the amount of times that I had to try not to laugh in the middle of a take which is always a great sign in terms of how strong the script is yeah but there were no sort of like disaster moments no I think it was actually quite a smooth process and the sessions were run very professionally yeah so the process was smooth but there was always time for a giggle and a laugh Overall, I've just really loved working on this. I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, and I can't wait to listen to it from start to finish again. Because obviously, when we first did the read-through together as a cast on Zoom, we read it all together from start to finish. But so much time has passed now. And in the recording sessions, we've only worked on our scenes, obviously. The scenes where we actually have to speak. So it'll be fun to listen to it all from the beginning, you know, and hear all the other scenes that I'm not involved in, just to enjoy it. Funny stories working with Cry Havoc. Um, <laughs> um, well, I've simply enjoyed having fun with the cast, the slight incongruities of seeing people's setups, people sort of being under blankets and people being interrupted by their cats, Andy Seacombe having seagulls in the background... Do I have any standout moments or funny stories from working on Cry Havoc that you'd like to share? No. <laughs> no, I'd like to keep all those things very private. <laughs> all sorts of things went on, but I, I can't tell you. No, no, no. It was hysterically funny. The time went... No, 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 I can't tell you that either. Um, it was all... All I will say is it was a wonderful experience. Um, uh, <laughs> hugely enjoyable experience. And I hope... There are many more to come. Backstage at Cry Havoc is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, share-alike 4.0 international license. It is directed by Armani Zardo, produced by Laurie Ann Davis, with executive producers Alexander J. Newell and April Sumner. This episode was edited by Laurie Ann Davis and Catherine Vernella. Thanks for listening. <laughs>